I tried to understand how do the sensory impulses produce impressions or images in the brain? How does thought interpret an image and creates further image resulting into imagination? How does thought move in the psychological space and create time? How does a thought which is a material process in the brain cells produce everything in psychological space, me, myself and others? How does thought produce both wonderful and dread things, dreadful things in our lives? How has thought created our social, economic, political and religious systems? How does the thought conceptualize us as Hindus, Muslims, Christians and Buddhists? How has the thought of money, more money, more names, more fames, more power, more satisfaction and more lust translates into more human sufferings? How does the thought of domination of others lead to wars that have killed and continue to kill millions and millions of people? How do thought of fear or greed lead to the generation of concept of God to provide a psychological security and satisfy our unfulfilled desires? What role does play in the creation of pleasure, pain, grief, hope, expectation and belief? What exactly is a thought? Is thought a living thing? Finally, I was able to understand and decode the thought, its contents, its nature, its network and its movement creating the psychological space which simultaneously create the psychological time, the past, the present and the future. The phenomena of thinking is creating both the thinker, the subject and the thought which is always about an object. Just think over it, can thinker, the subject, exist in the absence of thinking? Can thought, the object, exist in the absence of a thinker? Hard to realize is that thinking, thought and thinker are one manifesting in the field of consciousness. First is the consciousness is just beingness. Consciousness is not I amness or mindness which is nothing but my mind only. Consciousness is still there when my mind is not operating at all in deep sleep. Anybody can observe it. My mind is made up of all my past experiences, upbringings, patterns, habits, feelings, intentions, greed, fear, pride, aspirations and thoughts and all the psychological positions I have. Although I own my mind, I do not own consciousness which is beyond the mind. Consciousness is more like a, an infinite space, a screen or a phenomena in which brain works and creates the mind. Consciousness is like a quantum field, a gravitational field or an electromagnetic field a fully active, dynamic field that influences all the forms of life and their surroundings. It is the vacuum, nothingness or emptiness postulated by the great Buddhist scholar Nagarjuna. It is extremely subtle, exists outside of matter, space and time. It is also possible that this field predates the Big Bang. Sometimes question arises, what was before the Big Bang? So it seems that uh, this is the field from which the Big Bang has sprung. Since consciousness is not a memory, a piece of information or a thought, the only way to connect with it is to quiet the mind first. 
द माइंड मस्ट हैव इमेंस स्पेस और ओपननेस फ्री ऑफ फ्रेगमेंटेशन कन्फ्लिक्ट एंड कन्फ्यूजन देर मस्ट बी ए बाउंडलेस स्पेस दैट इज फ्री ऑफ मी माई ईगो और द सेल्फ इट मस्ट बी एज क्लियर एज ग्लास allowing one to see things as they are without any reflection refraction or distortion only when mind is free of all conditioning particularly the religious conditioning it is possible only then to have a true perception of consciousness there should be no excitement no sadness no emotion no passion no use of imagination but there should be a sense of wholeness depth quality vitality and harmony with what is as opposed to what should be which creates conflict in the mind then and only then one see the whole truth of what is for this one needs a serious interest in learning about oneself a considerable drive and energy flow to delve deep into the study of consciousness there needs to be a strong feeling of energy that has no goal or cause and that should be extremely extremely silent it is possible to go deep into the interior of the mind and find out what has been stored there for millions of year through the evolving dna we don't have any other way to understand realize define characterize quantify or measure consciousness this and this is the only way normal human beings are incapable of achieving this stage simply because they are unable to stop thinking hold a wide range of beliefs are insatiably in search of players and end up consuming a significant amount of energy by engaging in constant conflict with their selves or other people once the contents of the mind have been removed or neutralized only then will one have access to the entire stream of consciousness or pure awareness which exists outside their mental sphere there is nothing religious or mysterious about this please note there is nothing religious or mysterious about this anyone following this process by dropping the mind can have true perception of consciousness after understanding the consciousness book discuss discusses three important questions what dies what survives and why i am here do i have an everlasting soul do only human beings have soul do we have heaven or hell do we have rebirth these questions are dealt in detail to understand the truth of all these concepts created by the human mind